I'm Jeff Murrow. I want to welcome you to True Texas History, uh, where today we are going to talk about the mystery of the Texas Troubles. Now, this is uh, one of those corners of Texas history that not many people know a whole lot about, and those that know a whole lot about it aren't don't talk about it much. Um, but uh, today, July 8th, is the anniversary of the Texas Troubles. And what the Texas Troubles were, back in 1860, uh, on this night, uh, it just so happened that large fires simultaneously broke out in the cities of Dallas, Denton, Belknap, Gainesville, Waxahachie, Kaufman, and Navarro. You know, so throughout... Um, a lot of, you know, throughout these cities, people thought it odd that uh, fires broke out at all these places. Um, now, uh, that's what we know. And of course, like any event, something like this uh is typically spun depending upon who wants to benefit from it. And this is one of those that uh, was definitely uh, spun. Now, in Dallas, the fire just happened to destroy um, the printing press of uh, an outspoken, outspoken newspaper in the area. Uh, so it, it was suspicious. And right away, uh, people started coming up with all kinds of excuses for the fire. Now, granted, it was a very hot summer, even hotter than what we're going through now. I mean, they were recording temperatures of 113 in Dallas. And there, technologically, there was something called prairie matches that uh, had been invented, and some of the stores had the prairie matches. Um, and these things were known to uh, catch fire sometimes with uh, very hot breezes that came through. Okay, uh, now being that it was hot, uh, that's possible. Yet, when you dig into the documents, uh, the fires uh, tended to start in rubbish heaps. They were not starting in the hardware stores, which is where you would find uh, those prairie matches. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the politicians of the day, because uh, Governor Houston was in charge, and of course there were some people that did not like Governor Houston, some people uh, hated Governor Houston. Most of the Texans at that time uh, did like Governor Houston, and he was having to make sense out of it because uh, something weird's going on when you have that many fires all at once. Now, um, Houston was saying that people were using it for political gain, which uh, there were some people uh, up in Dallas that were saying that these were slave insurrections uh, and the reason why all these fires broke out simultaneously is that it was an organized uh, conspiracy to incite the slaves. Um, and of course, Houston dismissed it. You know, he wanted to go with uh, some other explanation. Now, it, in terms of uh, the insurrection, uh, there were uh, there was evidence of revolvers uncovered. Uh, there were meetings uh, between abolitionist organizers and, and local slaves prior to that event. Uh, there were, uh, there was an episode where it was documented that a hundred doses of strychnine had fallen into the hands of slaves. Uh, so th there's some evidence on both sides. And I find that modern historians tend to spin it whichever way uh, they want to and they come up with all sorts of excuses rather than going ahead and taking a look at the primary documents. Um, it was clear that uh, there were a lot of fires 
and these episodes were uh, capitalized upon by those that wanted to go ahead uh, and agitate uh, for Texas leaving uh, the Union because as a result of these fires, vigilante committees were set up in these various com uh, communities. Uh, you know, there's documentation that there was a vigilante committee uh, in Tyler and it would patrol the city at night and there were some attempts at people trying to start fires in Tyler as well, but the vigilante committee caught them. Uh, and there was also a lot of hangings uh, that happened in those days. Now, before you uh, go ahead and think, oh no, you know, they're, they're hanging blacks in Texas again. No, it was uh, the people that were being hung uh, were uh, those individuals identified as conspirators providing uh, the revolvers and the strychnine uh, and whatever else uh, to the slaves for an uprising. So there were white people hung. Uh, you know, one of the things about Texas history, you've got to be honest. I mean, uh, we have uh, people of all races have been hung and don't just automatically assume when you hear the word hanging, you automatically assume one particular race. Um, the people were starting to take things into their own hands because they didn't trust the government to take care of things. Keep in mind, not only were fires breaking out in Texas, you had had recent uh Indian difficulties up in Oklahoma where the rangers had to be uh, reestablished and uh, uh, John S. Ford had to go up there and chase after Iron Jacket. You also had trouble down on the border uh, with Mexican bandits where uh, the Mexican bandit Juan Cortina had literally uh, taken over the town of Brownsville and was running roughshod over all the authorities. Uh, people were looking for leadership to see in Houston. And what was he doing about it? Almost nothing. And they were frustrated and they wanted answers. You know, because you don't have fires, you don't have trouble uh, with the Indians, you don't have trouble on the border and all this without expecting your governor to do something. And the people of Texas uh, expected him to go ahead and do something. Um, but that's what the, uh, that night uh, with all the fires that broke out, uh, mysteriously at strange locations, uh, is what they call Texas Troubles because those incidents were spun uh, by the various forces uh, depending upon what they wanted. The abolitionists really did want slave uprisings. Uh, the secessionists really did uh, want to go ahead and pull away from the Union. And uh, this was one of those incidents that were capitalized uh, on by people all over. And this was also one of those things that uh, some of the people considered hush-hush, uh, where you weren't supposed to talk about it, because there were secret societies in Texas at that time, uh, the Knights of the Golden Circle, that uh, saw to it that uh, some of what was going on underneath uh, in Texas politics and events uh, were swept under the rug. I may have to do something on the Knights of the Golden Circle in a future episode. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about uh, the Texas Troubles, uh, since this is the anniversary of them. And uh, I'm welcome to hear your thoughts. Feel free to go ahead and leave your comments, and uh, we'll get back to you. Till next time, this is Jeff Murrah wishing you via con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.